Okay, today I'm going to be showing you one of the most mysterious effects in physics called the bead chain fountain. And I'm going to be showing you what happens during it and how it actually works. And then I'm going to be showing you another mysterious phenomenon that when you drop this chain on a table, the table sucks it down faster than gravity could have pulled it if you dropped it. So this mysterious physics phenomenon was first brought to light by the YouTuber Steve Mould. He showed that when you fill a beaker filled with a chain of beads and you drop it out of the beaker, it doesn't just fall out and come over the edge, but it seems to defy gravity and shoot out of the beaker and fall. And it forms this fountain that pulls the beads out over and over above the rim. So it looks like this. I have here a beaker filled with 150 feet of a chain of beads. And look what happens when you pull it out of the beaker and let it just free fall. Okay, let's see if this works. Three, two, one. Whoa! Holy cow! <laughs> that was awesome! Whoa! Whoa! So what's cool about that last one, did you see how it was even falling back into the jar and then out of the jar? So that's so weird. How was it looping up, falling back into itself? So what's weird about this physics demonstration is it defies all of the previously known physics of chains falling. According to those theories and the theories of momentum and impulse on chains falling, the chain shouldn't rise up above the rim, but it technically should just go over the rim and fall down. Why is it that the chain is getting pulled up over the rim? How is it lifting up above it? scientists actually started to study this phenomenon and try to recreate it and develop a model for why it happens. And here's what they came up with. Okay, so what's so weird about this phenomenon? Well, the weird thing is that when you model this chain falling out of the jar, you can get it to come up and over the jar and fall down onto the floor. And that's no problem because this length of chain is longer than this length of chain. And so it weighs more. And so it can easily pull it out of the jar. But the weird part is, is this isn't what happens. What actually happens is the chain gets pulled up and over the jar with a much bigger arch. And if you balance these forces, you'll find that there's some extra momentum needed to get it up and over the end of the jar. So the question in all of this is where does this extra momentum come from? How is it able to lift it up and over the edge of the jar and continually stay there until the edge of the string gets out of the jar? And so two scientists decided to try to answer this question and model what was actually happening. And these two scientists, Biggins and Warner, found that this extra momentum doesn't come from the chain actually falling onto the floor or gravity at all, but it actually comes from the table that it's sitting on. So what they did is they modeled the chains as though they were rigid rods connected by some flexible strings. And here's how they can model it as rigid rods because the balls on the chain actually don't have flexible strings in between them, but they can all pivot at the centers. And so when you have about three of them together, it acts the same as though it were a rigid rod. So three of them making one rigid rod with a flexible center. And that's based on the number of balls it takes to get a certain radius of pi. Well, let's model what happens to this as it gets pulled out. Let's say we're just sitting on a table. So, so as you pull up this string, it's going to pull up the center of mass of that rod. So it would turn like that as you pull it up. But here's the problem. It's sitting on a solid surface, so it can't sink down under the surface. So instead of pivoting like that, it actually knocks the end of the rod against the table and pops it up. This knocking force against the bottom of the container or against the beads below it is actually what pops the beads up. So it turns out that it's actually the normal force, meaning the force of the beads against the table that's pushing the beads up and out over the edge. But here's the interesting part. If this model is actually true and it's popping up all the beads because they hit against the bottom and pop up higher than the edge of the jar, if that were actually true, then you would expect the opposite when they hit the ground. So when they hit the ground, this edge would hit first and it would yank the chain above it faster and so it would pull down the chain faster than it would if it were just falling free fall. So for example, if you have a chain that looks like this and these are flexible strings and these are rigid rods, what happens when you drop this on the table 
is this rod hits the ground first and because it's free to pivot, it actually yanks down the string above it and pulls down this edge faster than it would if it didn't hit a table. And so now that it pulled this down faster, now this one's traveling even faster. And when it hits the ground, it pulls down, it pivots this and pulls down this string above it even faster. So it turns the stick each time it hits. So when this one hits, it turns and pulls the string down. When this one hits, it turns and pulls it down. This one hits, it turns and pulls it down. And so the result is that when this falls onto a table, the table actually sucks it down. So it's actually the upward force of the table against it that's pivoting the stick that sucks it down faster than it would if it were just free falling. And there's actually a really cool study that did this that proved that that's true. And I did a small mock-up of this and found that it was also true. So you can see that the chain of sticks that falls onto the table actually gets pulled down faster by a very small margin compared to the same chain of sticks that doesn't fall onto a table. And so this is the opposite of the effect of the chain fountain. It's the table sucking it down as opposed to the table knocking it up over the edge of the cup. So what's cool is when you work through the math, you end up with this final equation where you can predict the height of the chain above the beads. And what this also means is that the longer the chain is, the longer you drop it or the higher you drop it from, the higher this H2 will be. So the larger the height will be up and over the edge of the jar. Okay, so this test was done with me dropping it over the edge of my stairs down to the bottom. Three, two, one. Whoa, look how high. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> But what does it look like if I'm just standing there? Whoa. 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 So if you haven't ordered your Action Lab subscription box, head over to theactionlab.com or click this link here. And if you're not subscribed to the Action Lab yet, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.